Bright Memory Infinite has finally been released. If you've purchased the original game, you got this one for free. If not, you'll have to pay $20 for this. I reviewed the original Bright Memory previously and decided to take a look at the follow-up. Was it worth the wait like the late review? Is the $20 price tag worth it? Will the montage for it be as badass? Let's find out starting. For a bit of a refresher, Bright Memory was a first person shooter and this one is pretty much the same. The first thing you'll notice are the graphics which are absolutely gorgeous. Even being below minimum specs due to supply chain issues, I was able to run this game without any dips in frame rate on high settings. Pretty impressive considering this is not a AAA title. While the graphics and frame rate were great, I had a number of game breaking bugs. The worst was when I couldn't get past a certain level for literally no reason. The game would just keep getting a fatal error. Thankfully, it was resolved quickly by the devs with a patch, but please keep this in mind if you run into any crashes yourself. The music was an unexpected twist in my opinion. It features far more oriental instrumentation than the music of the past game. Granted, the music in that game was copyrighted, while this one is original from what I can tell. Some of the tracks are good, but they definitely get repetitive even in this incredibly short game. And yes, we will get to the length of the game eventually. Before I do that, let's focus on the narrative quickly, and I do mean quickly because it is basically an afterthought here. You're given some cutscenes throughout the game of what is going on. Basically, there is a black hole that has appeared that is causing a strange phenomenon. Unfortunately, there isn't much payoff and it's really not worth investing any time in because by the time you do, the game is over. The action here is basically carried over from the first game with a few alterations. It's still a very linear first person shooter through and through. You start out with an SMG but eventually find a handful of other weapons later in the game. These weapons also have secondary ammo that can be used for alternative attacks. You also have a sword and a few other EMP abilities to help you take down your enemies. While some enemies you encounter can be bullet sponges, most of the tools at your disposal are satisfying to use. These weapons and abilities can be upgraded but most of it is pretty standard, basically boiling down to doing more damage. Overall, the action is very solid and well done here. In terms of variety, there is a vehicle section thrown in towards the latter half of the game. It actually was pretty fun and fast paced, however, the same can't be said for this force stealth section. Basically, you'll need to avoid being detected since your suit is not able to be used at the moment. As soon as you're caught, you need to restart the segment over again. Thankfully, checkpoints are plentiful, but it definitely is a low light in this game that only serves to artificially lengthen an incredibly short game. And now for the length of this game. Just like this review right here, it is incredibly short. My total playtime on normal difficulty is less than two whole hours. This is honestly the sole reason I can't recommend it at full price. Outside of cosmetics and upgrades, there isn't really a whole lot to explore content wise. If the game was five to six hours long with a more interesting upgrade system and a tad more satisfying combat, I would recommend it in a heartbeat. For everyone that got it for free, it's easily worth playing. The action is fast and frenetic, the graphics are great, and it's fun in small bursts. It's just a shame that it's so damn short. Curious if there will be a sequel of some kind, but not sure at the moment. Thank you all for watching as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and this is Powerhouse, signing off.